Go get the strap, it's your boy Crypto Blood. Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. I am back from out of town, back to the routine. It is September 18, 2018. What's good, people? We're rocking out to that 50 cent. Get the strap featuring Casanova and 6ix9ine. Love this song. But today, we're going to be talking about Bancor. Man, I, it should not be a surprise to any of you who follow me and I've been warning you guys for over six or seven months that Ethereum just is not going to cut it with these uh, platforms, these ICOs that promise so much. The ones that actually can deliver will have to deliver those services on a different platform other than Ethereum. I'm sorry. So Bancor is expanding into the EOS platform away from Ethereum. We're going to look at what they're, what this article is talking about. And also, could we still have one more fundamental tail risk left in this market for 2018? The Mt. Gox payouts. Could that be another catalyst for another sell-off and pent-up demand to sell cryptocurrencies uh we'll take a look at that as well but first let's take a look at that market cap really quickly we're currently at 198 billion dollars just under 200 billion for global market cap for cryptocurrencies the bitcoin dominance has dropped a little bit it's at 55.25 and uh, a green day though we've bounced off of uh, the the lows that we had we're kind of fading backwards now it may be a nice elliott wave pattern going on an ABC count currently. Uh, we shall see though. Um, but overall, the markets are up for Ethereum, especially Bitcoin Cash up, EOS up 3%, Stellar up 4.5%. So, again, over the last 24 hours, we've seen a nice bounce off of this last low. And as you can see from this chart, I'm starting to see a channel here. If you guys can recognize it, I'm going to put this in a uh, pin here. I'm not going to draw a formal. This is kind of where we are as a channel. So if we can stay above that, that's fine. We may just keep doing this for a while, you know, um, but no real movement in the markets other than a price swing of about three to four hundred basis points for bitcoin so nothing to really report on as as i said earlier this was the pop off those lows it looked kind of artificial and then we're starting to see a move back down but again this could be an abcd formation here after that big move up but we shall see i'll keep an eye on it Again, just mentally keep in your mind, if we stay above 60, just say 6,100, we're good. We start heading lower than that, that should be uh, of some concern for us. So first article is out of Coindesk and it is about Bancor. It says here, Ethereum DAP Bancor is expanding to EOS for faster and free transactions. No, really? I'm so surprised. Bancor, one of the most popular and valuable decentralized applications on Ethereum, is expanding to the EOS blockchain. According to a company announcement, the decentralized liquidity network, which allows users to trade a range of Ethereum-based tokens without depositing funds in an exchange or matching trades in an order book, will bring that capability to EOS. The new cross-chain product called Bancor X will allow users to trade between selected EOS-based tokens, which have yet to be specified, as well as between EOS and Ethereum-based tokens. See, that's a nice way of saying uh, Ethereum's not going to be good enough for us, so we're going to just kind of edge on over to the EOS side. Bancor is now evolving into a cross-chain liquidity protocol, the company explained in the announcement, adding that it has published code for open source smart contracts on EOS, allowing users to experiment with the protocol in a testing environment. No timeline was set for Bancor X launch on EOS live blockchain. Explaining the decision to launch on EOS, Bancor's announcement cited that blockchain's network's transaction speeds, which are faster than Ethereum, as well as its lack of fees, in contrast to often costly gas fees Ethereum users must pay to call a smart contract. Again, like I don't understand, I don't understand why people don't get this point. That that model that Ethereum is using will not work. 
It will not work in a scalable fashion. People are not going to pay to interact with a smart contract. I'm saying end users are not going to pay. They're not going to load up a wallet just so they can do things on the Ethereum uh, network, Ethereum blockchain. And I've been saying this for I don't know how long. You guys know that. So we're going to see more and more projects like Bancor. And uh, there's there have been some ICO projects that have decided post ICO raise to uh, migrate over and develop on um, the EOS blockchain. You're going to see it's not just EOS. They're going to be, you know, Tron, Stellar. You're going to see a lot of projects finally kick the can on the whole Ethereum move because it's, it's just not sensible. It's just not sensible. And it, it's clearly way too slow. And even if they somewhat try to fix that issue, the whole business model of you, the end user, having to pay to interact with the network, it's just not a scalable, uh, a scalable way of doing things. Article goes on to say, as a corollary to the lack of fees, Bancor said that EOS eliminates front-running risk since transactions aren't prioritized in exchange for paying higher fees. It is worth noting, however, that while EOS transactions are fee free for users, deploying dApps on the blockchain can be costly for developers. And that's fine. As a developer, that's that's what you have. That's part of the operating cost, right? So I think that's the more realistic business model where the developer pays to stake their dApp on the EOS blockchain and the user gets to use it for free. That's how it should be. That's the only way you're going to get mass adoption of this stuff. I'm telling you. Article goes on to say here, an emergency break. One feature of EOS that Bancor's announcement did not cite, but which may be relevant to Bancor's offering, is the ability for a super majority of the network's block producers who maintain the EOS blockchain analogous to Ethereum's miners to effectively reverse transactions. While block producers cannot erase completed transactions, they can forcibly transfer tokens from one address to another. The freezing and reversal of EOS transactions has proven controversial, as many in the cryptocurrency community see the inability to do these things as a core appeal of blockchains. Um, I'm just gonna make a note, you know, a comment on that. Look, there are different blockchains for different things, okay? There won't be, well, there could be, EOS could be that blockchain for a number of of applications but you want immutability with a blockchain like bitcoin or litecoin or monero something like that where it's actually being it the use case for the blockchain is for currency but in a application type of blockchain there does need to be some malleability there especially if we're talking about using this on a, on a large global scale there may be mistakes that happen there may be hacks that uh some huge hacks that happen that you know the community comes together it's not just one person the community has to come together the bps have to come to come together and vote that and that is something that i think is very important and we need to see in what at whichever blockchain generation three blockchain comes to the surface and is the most popular one to be used globally that needs to be um in there in my opinion so you guys let me know you know i'm very opinionated on things and i would love to hear what you have to say about that the article uh finishes up by saying eos in contrast to ethereum provides the ability to refer alleged thefts to arbitration and to have block producers reverse the damage through accepted if controversial methods that ecaf that they're referring to the ecaf you know it is it's going to evolve for sure and, and hopefully at some point it can be for the most part all smart contracts or very close you know you may, we may not all you know be able to get fully to the point where it's a, a autonomous type of event it, it's evolving people it's not this thing is only like six months old now so bancor's protocol is already being used on the eos network to govern the market for ram a resource necessary for the creation of EOS accounts. Bancor also operates a block producer, Liquid EOS. So you guys let me know your thoughts on this. Um, man, I think this is, again, the telltale signs, people. You better wake up. EOS is here to stay, whether you believe it's a pedo coin or not, people. And it's 
it's not <laughs> it's not but that's that article let's take a look at the second article ethereum world news it says here mount gox creditor payouts may completely crash the market so mount gox opens civil rehabilitation process for corporations as reported by ethereum world news previously mount gox the now infamous exchange that was hacked for over 800,000 bitcoin has just commenced its civil rehabilitation claiming process per an official document from the exchange legal proceedings. I actually received an email from them, I think last week regarding this. Victims of the hack can finally make claims over the 170,000 Bitcoin and BCH that have become a part of the Japanese court case. To facilitate this process, the trustee of the legal process released an online tool that guides prospective claimants through the process of issuing a claim, which requires creditors to submit legal documents and proof that pertain to the matter. It is important to note, however, that at the time of the original announcement, only individual traders were allowed to participate in this process. With Mt. Gox traders affiliated with any corporations or firms having to sit on their hands until further notice but as revealed in a recently posted announcement corporate traders can now make claims via the same aforementioned process according to the announcement creditors of the exchange whether from a corporate or retail background will have until october 22nd to file claims at which point the online tool along with offline claiming process will be closed Following the October 22nd deadline, all of the civil rehabilitation requests will be submitted to Japanese courts by February 14, 2019 at the latest. And pending judicial approval, the rest of the Mt. Gox liquid assets, such as the aforementioned BTC and BCH holdings, will be distributed among the bona fide claimants. So it goes on to talk about the payouts may completely crash the markets. Speaking with the Telegram, Kim Nielsen, a former Mt. Gox trader who spearheaded the investigation into the exchange's bankruptcy claimed that a lack of demand to buy thousands of Bitcoin from the Mt. Gox case could completely crash the market. He explained that if anybody or any group of individuals ever tried to liquidate Mt. Gox holdings to do payouts in fiat currencies, the market would crash. He based his prediction on the fact that there may not be enough demand for the 170000 Bitcoin and BCH. So the selling of these digital assets would topple order books, pushing down the price of crypto assets across the board. He said it's possible some people would try to instantly sell the Bitcoin as soon as they receive them. Regardless, Nielsen also pointed out the many creditors will be happy either which way as their funds turn into an appreciated investment and that's free money even though payouts have been withheld for a number of years. Yep, so looks like this event, this whole uh, Mt. Gox liquidation event won't happen until sometime in February, um, maybe even March of next year. Is this a reason why we've seen these big whales begin to uh, move Bitcoin around because they know that this event is coming? I don't know, but I will say this, there will be a negative effect by how much i have no clue but there will be a negative effect once these funds are released into the market you got to understand that's pent up supply of bitcoin and bitcoin cash that hasn't seen the market so it's definitely going to suppress prices um how much i don't know and how long i don't know either hopefully hopefully by the time this event occurs we will be well higher than here where we are today at 6300 and you know if we if we have to come down from 20,000 down to maybe 16,000 is not so bad but if we're around where we are now or even eight thousand nine thousand dollars and and the Mt. Gox payout uh, hits and we hit go right back to where we are today that's that's not a good progression in as far as price for cryptocurrency so actually let me know what do you think by how much will the market be affected by this mount gox payout i think maybe about 20 35 percent correction i don't know you guys let me know and go get that strap it's your boy crypto blood i'm out Holla.